So we have, you've had to wait a long time, but I hope you'll be able to jump so in. I, you know, I, I was thinking, should I respond to your question or to what I've heard? Uh, and both you, I... You're welcome to do either. So first of all, I, I think our engagement with China is for ourselves. It's We are logged in a uh, Himalayan face-off. We have uh, close to about 100,000 troops, uh, if you count both the armies together, across the line of actual control. Uh, so U.S. does not have to motivate us to face off against China. China does that pretty well <laughs> by itself. Yeah. So it is, it is China that has motivated us to face off, uh, in some sense, against it. But having said that, I think there are two interesting uh, projects, trends, tendencies underway concurrently. The first, of course, is what you mentioned, uh, Chair, in the very beginning, the U.S. perhaps trying to shape the world into two camps, perhaps. I'm not sure that U.S. has a consensus inside it, so I don't think there is a U.S. position uh, that it is trying to preach in any case. I think uh, you may find that the discord within U.S. may become louder mm -hmm. as it tries to pursue that line, if it ever does, so that's the first part. But even if we were to uh, assume that U.S. has some, the deep state has some great idea of carving the world into two camps. I think that's not new for India. We have faced that idea for a very long time, and, and successive governments have uh, pursued non-alignment, strategic autonomy, multi-alignment, choose the word you want. But in many ways, we have, it's, it's not a new phenomenon. It's new for Europe, not for us. In fact, now Europe, Europeans tell us, how did you do that? Can you give us some secret <laughs> recipe? We want to learn from India on how to be able to, yeah. uh, to, to manage your own strategic affairs. So American design or European design and making us choose sides is not going to work with us. We don't work in the Manichaean sense, right? For us, we work in grays. We love grays, right? So that's the first project. The second project is the Chinese themselves are trying to distort the character of Asia. So Chinese want a multipolar world, but a unipolar Asia. And that is what we are fighting against. <laughs> so in a sense, we are rejecting the Chinese attempt to create a unipolar Asia. Why would we want a, 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 a hegemonic world where a set of actors dominate it? So I don't think India is going to buy into either of the two projects. I think, uh, uh, and, and, and obviously for us, uh, a, a, a very good strategic outcome would be that we could partner with France and, and EU and the US in ensuring that China is not able to carve up Asia uh, as it wants uh, at one level, but also to ensure that the world is not forced into certain corners uh, uh, that uh, the big two may want the world to resemble. So I think that's one, uh, one answer. Now let me respond to what I heard. What I heard is that uh, my European colleagues are worried about what Asia might do, what Africa might do, what other parts of the world may do. The truth is, it is Europe which is the weak link in this debate. And that is the reality. The, the lure of money, the lure of return, has made Europe incompetent and incapable to take a unified position against China. If you think you're going to see a Russia-styled mobilization against China, we are all living in La La Land. Europe is the weak link for US if it has to mobilize any sort of consortium against China. So please don't do what about me. I heard lots of people talk about Africa it doesn't want this, Southeast Asia doesn't want this, South Asia, it's Europe that doesn't want it, let's be honest here. And all my European friends have told me they don't want it. They don't want to be in a position when the Germans are told stop selling cars to China or the French are told stop selling handbags to China. <laughs> Let's be very clear. It's your handbags and your cars that are dictating your, your strategic priorities. Don't blame your own frailties on someone else. So that's the first thing. Uh -huh. I think the question to be asked is that if the Chinese were to invade Taiwan, what would be the European position? And I can tell you that. In fact, I just told you. Uh -huh. Right? Uh, so that's the first part. Uh -huh. The second thing that I heard, which is quite interesting, is about uh, the, 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 in some sense, the the relentlessness of the Chinese project expansion, economy, and partnerships. And I think that is a very frail assumption to base your future foreign policy on. I would argue that the idea that China would be this um, 100 feet gorilla is exaggerated. 
I also would argue that the fact that they would continue to enjoy these balance of trade, uh, favorable trading relationships with these countries in the next decade is also to be seen. In fact, I would argue that we may already have seen them peak. And now what, we, what emerges post uh, in the coming years may, may uh, see a very different, more vulnerable and more messy China. And in that sense, uh, maybe this whole idea of mobilizing the world to, to take on this uh, great monster uh, may itself be a futile project. And, 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 and countries, uh, uh, through niche arrangements, collaborations, partnerships, can take them on in different sectors. I think the, the idea that the Chinese are going to uh, dominate the world and therefore we need to start worrying about it itself may be foolhardy in the first instance. I think the Chinese are quite good at uh, uh, destroying their own credibility and, uh, and uh, economy and integrity in the days ahead. You have to, you have to believe in uh, your friends as, uh, as well as your enemies. And I think you should give them a chance to do that. My simple proposition for many of us is that if your neighbors want to hug China, allow them. Allow them to do it. Many of our neighbors did it. And they have realized the cost of that hug. It doesn't end. Geopolitics is not about the moment. It's about decades and centuries. And I think people must make their own decisions, come to their own conclusions. And uh, uh, I, I do believe that this is a decade where we will see uh, some, uh, uh, some sort of a rethinking on part of many countries that today we believe are uh, in the red corner. I think even that is likely to change in the coming days. But uh, our response to China is because we need to respond to China. We are not going to allow Beijing to shape Asia, uh, uh, put the political map of Asia to suit its purpose. And we will, of course, invite all of you to join us in that uh, endeavor to prevent them from doing that. But don't, uh, don't expect us to, believe in the, uh, to, to stand in the corner of Uncle Sam. We are happy doing, we are happy taking on the dragon by ourselves. And of course, we seek partnerships as well. Well, thank you very much for addressing the heart of the question.